Sup Shredders, my name is Logan aka Spiderhands and welcome to SP Reviews where today we're going to be checking out a couple of tracks from an act named Testimony of Apocalypse. And uh, if we switch over to here, we've actually got the album art on here. The album being None Escape the Judgment, which is going to be released on September the 2nd. So that's an upcoming album that obviously providing we enjoy ourselves today would be well worth checking out. Um, we're going to listen through each of these two tracks from start to finish and we're going to hear what we think. Let's go. Oh, nice feel, automation of the volume and the guitar is nicely panned. Oh, those drums are nice and punchy, aren't they? The ride's nice and resonant on the right. Oh, that bass is high, isn't it? I like it when bassists explore the higher part of the range. Nice distorted guitars. Where are we going next? We're getting those, we're getting that automation of that volume at a certain point, and it's kind of trippy, but I like it. Dope. I like the vocals. I like how the guitar, bass, and drums are sitting with each other. They haven't oversaturated with like a whole bunch of Reaper or anything. There's a lot of punchiness to the. Oh, going back to here. Yeah, there's a real mistiness to this part of the concert. That's a guttural scream. I'm sure that guy is practicing a uh, correct technique, but I, I, it sound, it's brutal. It's brutal to get that kind of tone, but it just means that it's very present in the mix. Nice change of, um, nice change of approach with those rhythm guitars. Great presence with those uh, palm muted parts. Oh, nice panning of those toms as well. Oh, a little bit of, little bit of phaser or flanger on those, uh, that lead guitar. Yeah, we've got a freneticism and a sense of chaos sometimes with the way this is arranged. We, usually, I'm, I'm used to like maybe having like groups of four or eight bars together, but we will cut it short and we go for some something of a more sort of progressive stance on it. And I kind of dig that. I like that it's unpredictable because you can hear that I think I've got a certain amount of time to make a, a statement, and then we suddenly switch and I'm cut off. But that's I don't I don't mind that. It means that the music is inherently unpredictable, and that's actually a plus. Believe it or not. <laughs> I'm nodding, I'm grooving, I'm vibing. Nice use of repeaters. I'm glad we double tracked those vocals at that point just for a little bit of extra oomph, you know? Nice 
Nice use of triplets here from the percussionist, the drummer. And I like that the vocalist is going down a little bit lower, a little more kind of, and that that lower range is a nice contrast to what we've had before. It forces you to listen a bit more closely and then you kind of get overwhelmed by the other bits, but in a nice way. It's giving me a death clock, made a locklips kind of vibe a little bit. Just a little bit. Nice use of wind effects here, or the wind folly, or the wind sampling, I don't know, but it does sound like we all shall rise and it's like a hellscape it kind of uh, it helps with the the album art here the the the, the friggin the, the death being wandered over by the four horsemen right four horsemen that's the name four horsemen great start great great at first introduction if you're gonna go for the style of music make it heavy make it make it aggressive make it visceral but again i have to hand this to the band like there was a precision with the way the vocals were done that we all shall rise. It was a nice way to finish that song in the interlude there. Great way to reinforce that hook, get it stuck in. And the guitars and bass and drums for the most part had a real great sense of unity among them. I'm, 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 I'm stoked with this so far. We've got Blessed of the Dead though. Track number two. Ah, starting with the bass. Nice mixing on the bass, eh? Sounds nice and round. Oh, those drums are panned really nice and wide. I mean, those guitars are really panned really nice and wide. And thank you for double tracking the rhythm guitars. Nice. Are we gonna go full ball blast beats? I like the fact that we're messing around with tempos and we're not being forcing ourselves to be inflexible with the speed that we approach things. It makes it seem more organic and authentic musically. Oh. Oh wow. Okay. Okay. It would have been, it's a shame. I really want to hear more of these leads because they're. T talented guitarists. That lead section we had there with those sweeps is not an easy thing to do, but it made it sound so clean. I know that storytelling is important, but to be fair though, we do hear a lot of the other instruments. We're not just vocal focused. Almost kind of black metalish at this point, isn't it? That was a hell of a clean run there. I'm glad that the vocals did come back in then, because I was just, I had no idea where we were going as a listener. I had no clue. I was like, oh, we're just going instrumental now. Have we had the story in the first 30 seconds? I, I don't mind that, don't get me wrong. I, I'm not, I, don't, I don't have a problem with that. Let it be chaotic, it's fine. Breakdown time. Dude, what do not, what don't we have in this? So like, you might be wondering, hang on, 
What kind of metal is this? It's like really interesting to me. When I when I grew up with metal, it was always like really kind of dark, evil kind of stuff. It was based around that kind of stuff. And then it got a little more varied and nuanced as like the 2000s and 2010s came along. But this is actually like faith-based metal. So it's kind of dope. And it's a really interesting angle that I don't get to hear enough. So I'm kind of thankful to be able to review Testimony of Apocalypse because of that. It's nice to hear this type of metal and it's kind of dope. It's still brutal. It's still visceral. But like at the same time, yeah. It's a, it's unique. It's very, very young. It's more about the journey you're going on rather than trying to keep every single bar in a box. This is a great way to finish a recording session, I'm not gonna lie. Like, this is, it's, I love, uh, this is a great song, dude. That drumming is frenetic, man. Those double kicks. Those semitonal chromatic runs. Mm. Here we are. Oh, we're back to this. It's still something I'm getting my head around. Like, just naturally for me, with the vast majority of stuff I review, there is just a set tempo for the most part. So it's kind of still unusual to me that they would just completely just abandon a set tempo and just switch to that on the bar. But that's what they do. And I I, I kind of get it from just a sense of like, again, like they they just, they, they have a vision for a riff and they just go straight to that. And that shows a real sense of musicianship, I suppose, at the end of the day. It definitely distinguishes each section so that they are easily identifiable. Great work with this interesting effects chain on the guitar parts. I wasn't expecting this to be honest. I love it. Well done. Well done. Bravo. Um, genuinely. That's it. Those are the two tracks that we have today uh, off of Testimony of Apocalypse's upcoming album. That's released again on September the 2nd. None Escape the Judgment. We have it all shall... We all shall rise and bless the other dead. And this is my conclusion of it. What do we think about this song? Or these two songs today? Um, Story-wise, I think it's about the end of days. People rising up from the dead. I'm gonna go and potentially, you know, shit the bed here. By maybe misunderstanding parts of the story. So bear that in mind. I'm working with what I interpreted from it. And if I misinterpret it... I'm just being honest. I, I may have made a muck up, but my understanding of it is that people will rise from the dead and they'll be like the second coming or something like that. And the blessed are the dead for they will get to rise again and be a part of like the next like people who roam the earth or something like that. And maybe they'll like, I, I don't know more than that. I'm being very careful, being very careful about what I say here, but that is my understanding of it. The imagery off of the album is absolutely gorgeous. I love the work here. Whoever did the album art design here is absolutely phenomenal and should get a race. <laughs> it's everything seems very stylistically cohesive. The story is it's, I haven't heard that about this about this in a while, and I dig that angle of it, you know. Um, you know, metal, whatever genre, and the apocalypse and stuff, it, it's, it, it all kind of works together really well. And it, it feels like a cuddly blanket to someone like me who spent a lot of time listening to it. And I had a great time reviewing it. The vocal performances there were visceral, those growls for the most part, aside from like in the latter half, We All Shall Rise, where we kind of went more of a kind of a more of a... 
almost a it's almost like a, a, a like a meditative approach of we all shall rise i, I can't do this the growl is like he can but it was a guttural vocal fry even in that bit which was impressive at that lower kind of uh percent the, the lower energy delivery there you know like to get that sound even at that being as sort of relatively quiet as he was is is impressive you know and that non that that lack of melodic coloration there was a great foil to all the crazy stuff going on with the guitar and bass parts but before we get to that the structure of these tracks was incredibly interesting um i really enjoyed my time listening through the really varied guitar riffs the bass riffs and stuff like that but they all came with these verse and chorus sections i don't know if it was a b c or a b c d or a b c d e but I don't mind. I dig it. I vibe with it, man. Give me as much as you can as long as I can vaguely follow along so it'll be fine. And that's part of why I'm glad this wasn't an instrumental. Because I feel like if you hadn't had the words to kind of give clarification to some of the bits, it may have been a bit messy. But they didn't do that. Again, you know, there was it was that was the vibe they were going for. They'll have two or three different sections, different tempos for each part. They didn't change the tempos for each different part though, so I suppose that's what made it easier to follow. You know, the verse section had a set tempo regardless of if it changed from the hook. Um, you had some really wild solo section as well, just put intermittently there. They were ludicrous in their speed and, and, and capability there, but I, I enjoyed them nonetheless. Again, I'm always fond of a bit of shred. Um, I'm not gonna lie and they pulled that off the drum grooves as well the fills and the bass runs were fantastic I like the bass wasn't just stuck on the low end of the root notes They explored especially at the start of we all show rise as well But a bit of I think there were some filter guitar parts in there as well And maybe some different fol foley and foil bits so added into post-production all in all the for the most part the vogue the instrument performances were on point and they did sync up really well with what the vocals were doing and the story there was a real sense of uh there was a there was a chemistry among everyone involved i'm not sure we to talk about the production of recording mixing mastery now i'm not sure how they recorded those drums but i like the sound of them i like the sound of the guitars and the bass as well and the vocals you know the different effects chains on the instruments it took a little bit to get used to just because of how clean some of the bits are in regards to the precision with the EQing and stuff like that. I'm used to like things being a little bit rougher than they were at least at the start of it but that's just testament to the clarity of the production now. You know, the post-production studio side was great. They did a really good job of getting the instruments level, filtering out any resonances there and it was the kind of level of post-production you need in this day and age to really stand out. Obviously there could have been, I personally, and this is me being really pedantic and anal about it, there could have been a little bit more gluing in some bits. Like there could have been a little bit more like reverb in the signal chain or something like that and master chain or something like that just to just to get things like a little bit closer together but that's that's totally fine again i'm not going to tell these guys how to mix and master their music they've done a great job of it and i'm happy with what i heard so far and i'm sure that when the album comes out it'll just slap it'll just slap man it'll be fantastic a great time all in all a really um really convincing first introduction to testimony of apocalypse uh, with you know their upcoming album and we all shall rise and bless the other dead and i wish them the best of luck in future but effectively this is my review of some of the tracks from testimony of apocalypse if you enjoyed this and hopefully you did <laughs> please do go show them some love via their various social medias and i'm sure they've got music on other digital streaming platforms like spotify and all that stay cool and stay safe and please remember to support local musicians and artists at this point in time as either help more than ever with all the crazy stuff going on in the world and i will catch you in the next review Spot ends up.